Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at translations, reflections, and rotations, which is 11.2 through 11.4 in your note, in your um, textbook. You are going to get um, a piece of paper that's some notes for you to follow along with and to take your, and to tape into your math notebook. So you will need to use those for that, this video today. If you don't have those, just ask me. You're going to be looking for 10 things to write down in your notes. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to talk about is what's a transformation, and that's just when a figure changes into another figure, and the new figure is called the image. There are three types of transformations we're going to be learning today. We're going to be talking about translations, reflections, and rotations. Let's go ahead and take the time now to pause the video so you can write down the vocabulary term for transformation, and once you're done, click play so we can go in and learn the first one. So the first one we're going to learn about is a translation, and it's a type of transformation in which the figure slides that doesn't turn. Every point on the figure moves the same distance and in the same direction. And this is just a way that you can remember what translations do. Translations slide figures. Both of them have SL in it, so it's a way that you can remember that they're going to slide. Let's go ahead and take time now to pause the video here so you can write down um, what a translation is once you're done click play and we'll talk about which ones are translations and which are not so the first few we're going to do together um, you're just going to be saying yes it is or no it is not a translation number one is no because it rotated number two is yes because we did slide number three is no because it was reflected and number four is also a yes because it did slide um, number four could technically be um, a reflection as well but since this shape in number four um, is symmetrical you can count it as a translation as well these are your what you're going to try so let's go ahead and try 3a through 3e let's pause the video and you're just going to answer yes or no and once you're done click play to check your work all right so number or sorry letter a is yes letter b is no letter c is no d is no and e is yes the only two that slid were letters A and E. The other ones either rotated, dilated, which means got bigger or smaller, or reflected, um, like letter D. One thing you do want to realize, too, is whenever you make a new point, you have to put this little um, apostrophe on it, and that's called a prime. So new translations have a prime on them. So A to A prime, B to B prime and C to C prime in this picture that you see to the right. These are all the new points. So just make sure whenever you're plotting new points and when you're transforming new points, you have the prime on them. So the next one you're going to try in your notes, and you're going to translate the figure four units to the right and four units up. So let's go ahead and take time now to pause the video, try translating this figure four to the right and four up, and labeling your new A, B, and C and once you're done, click play to check your work. Okay, so let's see how this is done. What I do is you just stick with the first point. So I'm going to start with letter A and go four to the right, four up. So one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So here is A prime, and that is zero, comma, two. B prime is four to the right, four up as well. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. B prime is at over 1 and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. C, again, 4 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's C prime, that's over 1, 2, 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4. My new point, and then letter D, I'm starting here, over to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 1, 2, 3, 4. So D prime is at over 3, up 2. Okay, so these are your new points, and then this is what your new figure should look like on your graph and your notes. How did you do? And remember, it's easy to take one point at a time and just move it whichever the translation is saying. The next thing we're going to talk about in number five is a reflection, and a reflection is a flip, and that's just when, the when a figure is reflected over a line called the line of reflection. And you want to think about a mirror image here. Again, another way to remember it is reflection and flip both have the letters FL in it, so that's an easy way to remember it. Let's go ahead and take the time now to pause the video where we're at right now, write down what reflection is, and then we're going to try a few together. So again, we're going to try these together. These are just determining whether it's a reflection or not. Number one is no. Two is yes, because it's flipped over the line of reflection. 
Three is no, that's actually a translation, which is what we just talked about. Number one's a rotation. And then number four is actually a yes. If you tilt your screen um, kind of diagonal, you can see that the shape has been reflected over that image. The next thing you're gonna do is try number six A and B on your own. So let's go ahead and pause the video, try six A and six B, and once you're done, click play to check your work. All right, so six A is yes reflection, and six B is no, that's actually a translation. The next part we're going to talk about is a review. We talked about this in lesson 11.0. Remember when you reflect across the x-axis, that changes that changes the y-coordinate. And when you reflect something across the y-axis, that changes the x-coordinate. So what we're going to try now is reflect across the y-axis, which, which means we're going to change the x-coordinate. Okay? So the x coordinate is always the first one. So p instead of negative 2 would be positive 2, 5. q prime would be positive 1, 1, negative 1. r prime would be positive 4, positive 2. And s prime would be positive 4, positive 4. Okay? Here's one that you're going to try on your own. This is the next one in your notes. You're going to reflect the figure JKL across the y axis. Here's the y axis, and it's the one in the middle. Write the new coordinates for J prime, K prime, and L prime. So go ahead and take the time now to pause the video and you're going to reflect across the Y axis, which means you're going to change the X coordinate. All right, so J prime will be over here. It's really easy to figure out too. Here's your Y axis and you just count how far away is J from the Y axis. It's one, two steps away from the Y axis. So it'll also be one, two steps away on the other side. K prime, same thing. Here's K. It's one, two, three, four steps away on the Y axis. So we're going to keep going one, two, three, four on the other side. This new point for K prime is over one, two, three, four, down two. And then J prime, sorry, it was over two, up three. The last one, L prime, is one step away from the Y axis. So we're going to do one step on the other side that point is 1, negative 1, and then you just connect the points together, okay? The last thing we're going to talk about is a rotation, and this one is probably the trickiest one of all to remember to do. Um, rotation just main, really means to turn. That one should be really easy to remember, and there's also always going to be a center of rotation, and that just means that's what the shape rotates around. Um, you're also going to be talking about the number of degrees a figure rotates, and that's going to give you the angle of rotation. So we're going to be talking about like 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees. Um, we're also going to be talking about clockwise and counterclockwise. Let's go ahead and pause the video here just to write down what a rotation is, and once you're done, click play so we can go on and talk about how to rotate things. All right, so we're just going to talk real quick. A 90-degree rotation member has 90 degrees. 180 degrees is a straight angle. 270 degrees is like a backwards 90 degrees, because um, notice you could also have 90 degrees in this corner. And then remember, 360 degrees is just all the way around. You won't really do a 360-degree rotation. Um, clockwise, remember, goes in the fashion of a clock. And then counterclockwise goes in the opposite direction. So those are just some reviews. What we're going to try here, um, actually first, we're going to talk about little tips to do whenever you are rotating about the origin um, or um, and then the different of degrees. So for 9A, whenever you rotate 90 degrees about the origin, your point will change and flip the Y and X, but the Y will be a negative. So for instance, A originally is 1 comma 2. And now a prime is negative 2 comma 1. Another way you can think about it is over 1, down 2, over 2, up 1. So it's just using the opposite. If you rotate 180 degrees, all you have to do is just change both of your positives to negatives or if they're negatives to positive. So once again, our a right here is 1 comma 2, but a prime over here is negative 1, negative 2. And then for letter C, 
if you rotate it 270 degrees, which is just the opposite way of doing a 90 degree rotation, you're essentially switching both X and Y and their opposites. So again, here's A at 1 comma 2, but a 270 degree rotation for A prime makes it 2, negative 1. Okay, let's go ahead and just jot these three things down real quick. These are just some ways that you can remember how to rotate around the origin. And then once you're done, click play because we're going to try a question. All right, this last one, we're going to talk about rotating. Um, we're going to rotate this figure EFG 90 degrees counterclockwise. Remember, counterclockwise is this way. And we're going to rotate it about point E. Okay, so that means if we're rotating about point E, that's the center point of rotation. So that means E won't change. So that means E prime will also be the same. That's over 2, up 1. Okay, point F, here's some, a way that you're going to try it, and then you're going to do a point G by yourself. Point F, notice how point F already has a connection to point E. And what we need to do is just make a counterclockwise um, 90 degree angle. If we're going to do counterclockwise, remember counterclockwise goes this way, like a clock going backwards. So we're going to open up the angle this way to make a 90 degree angle. Okay, now the trick is to know how long to make this line. Notice that from point F to point E, we have three spaces. So you also will need to have three spaces going up for your new line. That means that this extra part I would need to erase. Okay, so F prime would be here, and that point is 2, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4. What you're going to try now is try to find out where point G would go. So let's go ahead and pause so you can try to find point G, and once you're done, click play. All right, so point G is right here, and we're going to rotate it. I'm going to do this one in a different color just so you can see it a little bit better. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees about point E. So again, we're going to keep it at point E. And 90 degrees counterclockwise, remember, we're going to go this way with the point. So that means I need to make a 90 degree angle with G. Okay? Again, you have to figure out how long is G to E. It is 1, 2, 3, 4. So this one should also be 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's your new point for point G. I'm going to erase that extra. So G prime will be here. And that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of 1. Okay. It might make it easier to see if I erased the old stuff. Okay. And then you just essentially connect your point. So here's your, the blue figure is the rotated figure. Okay. That's going to conclude our notes for today. Just make sure you have all your 10 things written down. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.